Hi, welcome back to another Alchemy Stars video. My name is Lace and today we're going to be talking about, oh, let me just log in first and get those sweet little jemmies. We are going to be talking about re-rolling. So a lot has actually changed ever since like from the CBT to even launch to even now. To be honest, it's actually a really good time to re-roll because like these guys have actually come out with like these things over here, the exclusive thank you gift. However, let me pull back a bit and talk about what I'm going to be talking about in this video. First of all, I'm going to talk about what exactly I did for re-roll. Rolling. From my 17 hours of experience, what exactly happened, what I do believe is like kind of the best way to go. And I also want to show you guys the root method because we actually got it working. So guys, buckle up, fasten your seatbelts and let's get into the video. Okay guys, so back to this one over here. So what has happened is that the AS staff have actually given us more rolls. So what you can see here is the delivery time is June 18, 1.30 AM UTC 0. It's actually way past that now and it's probably like way past that as well, like whenever this video drops. However, people are reporting that they are able to actually claim this gift even on freshly re-rolled accounts I even made like a minute ago and so this actually changes a lot of things because it means like your two six stars like kind of re-roll target is like completely viable upon completing one three we will actually be able to have that's 10 plus eight so we're gonna have like 21 rolls honestly two six stars in 21 rolls is very very manageable so if you guys are like hardcore enough you guys can definitely go for that and so with that being said what exactly should we re-roll for what is kind of the re-roll method what about the banners and all of that. So let me get out of here and let me show you my account. So let me, before we get into the roles itself, I will show you what I ended up with. So before I get into it, just a massive shout out to everybody who showed up to the stream, like about 60 to 80 people on Twitch and like 140 on YouTube. That's just freaking massive guys. And like, I'm really grateful for that. I had a lot of fun and I hope you guys had a lot of fun too. But yeah, essentially over 17 hours. So for me, it was five hours on Twitch and then about three hours on YouTube and then like another 10 hours off stream. And like what I was looking for was I was actually looking for Carleen plus any other six star. And so what I ended up with is actually Carleen and Michael. And then what you're going to notice is that I do have Gronru and IC as well. So after pulling Carleen and Michael, I threw 10 into the standard banner. And from the standard banner, I was actually able to pull IC. And then after that, I went in on the beginner banner. And from the beginner banner, I got Gronru. And this is actually very fortunate. The only thing that could have been better was if I got Sariel or something. And so that kind of begs the question, what should you reroll for? So it's been like three days since launch. And I believe that I, well, I personally have a way better idea on like who to reroll for. After playing the game again, and like going through quite a fair bit, I do think that I have a way better opinion now. So let's get into the banners and have a look. Okay guys, so as you guys know, we do have the Carleen banner and we have the Uriel banner over here. If you have anyone that's waifu, you should roll for them. For me, I love Uriel. Honestly, I'm half kicking myself for like not re-rolling for Uriel, but like whatever, I'm probably just gonna go to pity and try for her. But I digress. So what I did was I went in with the eight pulls, I went in on the Carleen banner. So when you finish one four, you have enough of the Lumamba to buy eight single pulls on the Carleen banner. And so that's what I did. I went eight pulls into the Carleen banner first. After that, you also had three star flares that you could put into the standard banner. So that's the mainstay banner just over here. So I, I, I'm just trying to get used to the name of the main stay. And so again, I put three into here. However, what has changed is that now you can get another 10. That 10 that I showed you from the mailbox, that can also be put into here. So if you guys are still re-rolling, this is like massive news and like you guys should just freaking go get it. It is definitely not unreasonable to get like two six stars from 21 pulls. However, like I said, it did take me 17 hours to get freaking only two six stars together. Until then, I did not see a single pair of six stars from 11 rolls. On the other hand, if it had been 21 rolls, I probably would have seen a couple of pairs, but that's okay. I'm already like kind of settled into my account. Okay, so let me kind of like answer the question on why Carleen over Uriel. What prompted me to go for Carleen? I met a slave, okay? I met a slave. I love Uriel's design. Uriel is like my number one in this game. I'm still gonna gun for her, but like Carleen just really does make the game so much easier. And the reason is because like A, she is freaking water and B, she has a teleport and conversion all in one skill. Admittedly, it is on like a four turn cooldown, but like when you use it, it really drastically changes the game. Just having that like strong water unit is just like so freaking good. However, if you don't pull Carleen or if you don't pull Uriel, it is actually perfectly okay to pull any of the people on the mainstay. So I'm talking like the Sharona, Gabriel, Iridan, Caron. We've got like uh, Raphael. We've got so many. We've got Wrath. We've got Victoria. We've got Midgard. We've got like Michael, Gronru. We've got so many good characters. And so that brings me to my first point. You don't have to go for Carleen. You don't have to go for Uriel. And the reason is because they are going to be added to the main 
mainstay banner. And so I don't have to be like afraid of missing out on them. Like, you know, I could be spooked by them one day, maybe. I don't know. I I'm going to wail for them. No, actually, I'm not going to wail. I've never wailed in the game before. Back to it. Reroll targets. Who should you aim for? I will tell you who you shouldn't aim for. And you shouldn't aim for Nicanus. You shouldn't aim for AC. You shouldn't aim for Sariel. And you shouldn't aim for Gronru. Now, why should you not aim for these characters? Because when you go over to the beginner banner, you're going to have a chance to get one of these four characters again. And if you end up with a dupe, then that's going to be very, very sad. And so with that in mind, those four converters, which are typically really, really freaking good, you know, from just a ranking point of view, I would say they're top tier. Maybe except Nikki, but like you kind of get the point, right? Converters, two turns, they convert a bunch of squares. It is just so incredibly good. However, from a reroll point of view, you don't want them because you might actually hit them on the beginner banner. And what I mean by that is that of these four characters in the beginner banner, when you hit the 21st recruitment, you're guaranteed one of them. Okay, so I talked about who you shouldn't be looking for, then who should you be looking for? In my opinion, honestly, everybody except Nikki is probably pretty decent. Everyone has had a lot of success throughout the game with like all different characters. I've seen people run Wrath. I've seen people run Iridan. I've seen people run Midgard. I've seen people run Gabrielle, Victoria, Haron, so many of them. However, if you do want to meta slave, it's going to be building the water team. And so therefore, what you're going to be looking for is Raphael, Sharona, Connolly. I would actually say Raphael and Sharona are probably a step above Connolly. In a lot of ways, Raphael is a little bit too stacked. She heals, she converts, she does a lot of damage. She kind of like does it all. And so if you can put together a water team, even just taking like Raphael and then combining with like your Miss Blanc, your Vice and all of that, you've already got like a super hot fire team, you know? And so yeah, that is probably like what I would reroll for if you're looking to meta slave. Again, the reason you want a mono team for starters is because the elemental advantage is not that great. If you're fighting like your elemental weakness, you are only losing 20% damage. You can 100% outstat that. You can just like push your characters so far that they like brute force through everything. Not only that, but water itself, like it just has all of the good archetypes. It's got the two times chain combo in Hydrad. It's got like the great healer in like Filishai. Honestly, blue is really, really stacked and like you can make a lot of things work with it. Red, very DPS oriented. You kind of like are very reliant on either AC or you should have like a false. On top of that, you do need Alice as well. So there's like a lot of like conditions that you need to really make red work if you insist on using red. And honestly, like that is completely fine. I do think that red is quite good right now. Alice was added after the CBT and I think it's quite well balanced. As long as you have Alice, I think you'll be good. Alice is just a four star healer and you will be fine. And so next I am looking at green. So Forest, we've got Gabrielle, we've got Nickiness, we've got Midgard. So Midgard is actually quite good. I do think that Forest does have it all together. I do think that they are underestimated. To be honest, I kind of underestimated them too. But really, I have seen so many people make it work that I'm not even worried. Like if you guys like them, you guys should just do it. If there is any game to like not meta slave and just like waifu slave, this is the game. You really can just take like a mono team and just brute force all the way to the end. It's pretty nutty actually. All right, and so last we have Lightning. We've got Michael, Gronru, Iridan, and Wrath. So many people are trashing on Wrath and I don't know why. Wrath and Michael both are very, very strong off-color captains. The reason they are strong off-color captains is because, or any other like off-color captain, what makes an off-color captain strong is that they have no dependence on their like home element. So for example, Michael teleports and then he does damage like in between his starting and ending point. It is impactful and it does not depend on his like lightning element. On the other hand, for example, let's take AC for example. AC converts squares to red and that's kind of it. Her skill therefore is only going to benefit red teams and as such she is not going to make a great off element captain. Another great off element captain is Vice. Vice just does so much damage with her skill. Yes there is a minor dependence on the blue squares but it's like it's already very strong. Honestly I would look at the blue squares thing kind of like as a bonus. On the other hand we have Iridan who paints yellow tiles so again she is not going to be a good off element captain. So I think you guys can get the rationale right if the character is like a really solid standalone unit then they are probably going to serve well as an off element captain. Okay guys so I don't know if that answers your question but to be honest like what I'm really trying to say is that you can make anyone work here. The best possible start in my opinion is if you got like two water six stars. So for example getting Sharona and then Raphael is already a massive start. You're probably going to face roll all content. Harleen and Raphael, Carleen, Sharona like those are great combos. On the other hand if you got like Karen and Icy that would still be massive as well. Jonah and Icy, Jonah and Victoria plus a Faust a five star like that's already a killer. Getting Uriel and Icy that's already massive. However, it does not mean that getting two different elemented like units is a bad thing. Me, for example, I got Carleen and I got Michael. So that is a water and that is a thunder. It may not be the best thing right now. However, I was lucky because Michael is actually a really great off element captain. If I didn't get Michael, for example, if I instead got like Iridan, Iridan, a painter for yellow, she's not really good for off element. That's completely fine because like I said in my other videos, you're going to finish the game 
in about like two to three weeks and then you're going to start building mono teams. When you're looking at Endgame, when you're looking at Spire, you're going to be looking at specialized teams, mono teams. If you have a Raphael and you have an Iridan, dude, that's like two six stars in like two different teams. You're kind of spreading out your power and in a way, you're actually like diversifying. You don't have all of your power like loaded on the water team, although that is probably a really good idea. But yeah, that's kind of the thought process of like how I'm thinking when I actually get through each of these characters. So let me go through them one by one and tell you my thoughts. You know, would I keep them if I actually got them? So if I got this character, would I keep them? Corona and Raphael are both very, very stacked and very strong. So it's a yes for me for those ones. Sariel, Gronru, Icy, and Nikonis is a no because it is a chance for a dupe on the beginner banner. Nikki, typically people will like, no, she's not that strong. I think she's okay, but I would definitely prefer like a lot of the other characters over her. Connolly is strong. I would take it, but probably ranked less than Raphael and Sharona. Haron, probably the best fire unit right now. AC is a no, as I said before. Victoria, Jonah, quite good, but like you do need converters. Again, if you're running a fire team, you need to look for Faust. You need to look for Alice. You need to look for Icy. Gabriel, Midgard, Forest are probably generally like tier lower. In my opinion, in the current state of the game, they just not going to work that well. A lot of the end game bosses are like fire. And so they're going to roast your like forest teams. However, if you are insistent on forest, I definitely would run Midgard. Michael, Gronru, Iridan, and Wrath. I honestly think all of them are good, except don't reroll for Gronru because again, the beginner banner thing. Michael, again, a great, pretty loaded, like off element captain. Iridan, a great converter. In my opinion, like the more converters you have in a team, a mono team, the better. Iridan is like a converter on crack. She's also like ultra waifu. And then we've got Wrath, who is also ultra waifu, and she is just a really solid sniper. In my opinion, another great off element captain. In terms of elements, I would definitely tier water is number 100%. And then at number two, you've got fire and thunder, depending on who you get. Honestly, like both of them are like really good. And then at fourth place, you've got forest just because of the way the game is right now. Like if the end game was loaded with a whole bunch of thunder bosses and stuff, you man, you'd be seeing like forest shoot up in the rankings. But right now it's a lot of fire and like water deals with it very well. Okay guys, so I've kind of like started to form an opinion, started to form like a tier list, my own personal tier list. Obviously it's not like a tier list until the whole community kind of like agrees on it. And there are still a lot of people like trashing on like wrath and I'm like bruh and so if we haven't agreed it's not meta but this is my opinion and I have told you the reasons as to why all right guys so I think that's kind of it there the last ones I want to run through is Colleen and Uriel both are very very strong units in their respective elements I would definitely take them if I got either of them okay guys so the last thing for this video I wanted to show you was the root method okay so let me just turn this off open another instance and show you exactly what to do so guys what I have here is BS tweaker and I've got blue stacks instance manager here honestly if this is really unfamiliar to you, I would probably just go back to like instance copying or like salting emails. Okay guys, so this is the scenario we're in. So you've just finished rerolling and you don't have anything. This is not a good account. You want to throw it away. And so what exactly do you do? So if this is your first time, like trying to refresh the guest account of this instance, what you have to do is you have to actually close this one. So this is 64.3. I'm going to close this. And I'm going to remember it. This is this one here. And then you're going to have to come over to BS Tweaker and then you're going to have to select the right one, which is this one down here, 64.3. Come up over here, hit root and then hit unlock. Lock. So I'm just going to hit unlock. It's not going to do anything. Well, okay, wait, that's like actually a little bit weird. So it is now unlocked. What you see down here is root unlock true. And then what we're going to do next is we're going to actually launch this instance and then hopefully it's going to boot up. So we're just going to wait for this. And so as you can see, we are back in blue stacks and then we are going to hit the patch button. So I'm going to hit patch and then you're going to see here root patch Android 8 true. And so this instance is successfully rooted. And so what I did personally is I use this app, change device ID. You can just go over to Google Play plug in this name, look for the icon and download the app. And then so you open up the app and then I'm going to show you guys what it looks like. So essentially this is a one click solution for changing your device ID. So what happens is that all I have to do is I have to like refresh this and then apply it and then it should be, yep. So you have a new ID. Before I move on, I want to mention that you don't have to actually use this app. You could actually go over here back to Bluestacks Tweaker and then go to device. So down here, you can see Android ID, you can hit random and then you can hit apply. What that means is that this emulator should technically have this Android ID in it. So if I open this up, you'll see this guy here. And so this method actually works as well. Use one of them. Don't use both of them. All you need to make sure is that your device ID is different to what it was before. Now, the second part of this is you just need to go home and go into your system settings, Android settings over here, go into apps and then alchemy stars, and then go into storage. And then here, all you have to do is clear data. That's it. 
clear data. Okay, and that's it. And that is completely it. From here, I will show you guys to prove it. Let's go home. Let's open up Alchemy Stars. And what you guys should see is that it's going to be a completely new instance. So as you can see, the cinematic is playing. So I'm just going to skip that. And then I'm going to go through the account creation process. Agree, agree. And then let me just hit, oh, here we go. Guest. And then this should ask me for all of those details, including my birthday. So global server, because remember before it was locked to a global server. I'm going to hit global server. I'm going to hit confirm. I'm going to hit Australia because that's where I'm from. I'm going to plug in this birth date. I'm going to go next. And then I'm going to actually have to download. So after this, you have to download about like an 80 megabyte patch. And so as you can see, it is patching. We're going to be looking for that 75.8 like that I just said. And then when it is done, we will be able to actually go into the game and you will see that it is a completely fresh instance. So guys, do not be alarmed if it actually like freezes on this screen. So you'll notice it freeze if like everything just stops moving. If everything stops moving, but it's at 75.8, then it's fine. However, if it is not at 75.8, then you'll need to restart the game. So you just need to close it and then you just need to go home and then reopen it. All right, guys. So after this, we should be getting the cuts scenes and that should prove that this is a new instance. It's already proving that it's a new instance. I'll just make it to the tutorial just to like make sure you guys really know. Actually, you know what? This already proves it. Like, I've got to enter a new name. This is it, guys. This is it. Freaking hallelujah, because I like this method a lot. And the reason I like this method is because I just don't like cloning instances on Bluestacks. If you guys are, like, for some reason running out of hard drive space and you guys use, like, the cloning instance method, then, like, consider uninstalling Bluestacks after you've bound, like, your main accounts. Because even if you, like, delete your instances, your cloned ones, like, there is still some residual data that just do does not get deleted. It's so freaking annoying, and it's why I really try to avoid the clone instance method. All right, guys, but that's should prove that this method definitely does work and with that being said let's wrap up the video because there is nothing left to talk about all right guys secret message root. and so if you guys could drop that secret message down in the comments below i would really appreciate that it lets me know that you've made it to the end of the video which is here and i am very grateful otherwise you guys already know what to do if this video has helped you or you kind of found it entertaining or you liked it then consider a like a sub a comment a pin a follow you already know what it is but otherwise happy re-rolling thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.